top tech manufacturer of Foxconn has said it has decided to pull out of the semiconductor joint venture 1.5 lakh crore rupees with Indian conglomerate Vedanta. Around the world, a race is underway. A race to build the most advanced chips, not the snack, but the semiconductors. These chips are the brains of modern day electronics. They power every gadget that you use. They are a strategic asset. They also make a very lucrative business. An industry worth over $500 billion. Now, India wants a slice of this pie. Is that mining major Vedanta and iPhone maker Foxconn have called off their $19 billion joint venture for semiconductor manufacturing? Vedanta is an Indian company. Foxconn is a Taiwanese company. Vedanta is a leading natural resources conglomerate. Foxconn is the world's largest technology manufacturer. Foxconn is the company that makes one of the highest number of Apple iPhones. Foxconn and Vedanta are the two companies that had raised the hopes for India to become a semiconductor powerhouse. But now that hope, that aspiration for India seems to be in danger. If not danger, it's a major setback for sure. In September 2022, the center hailed Vedanta and Foxconn's semiconductor manufacturing plant in Gujarat as a landmark. Less than a year later, the partnership between the two companies to set up the $19.5 billion plant has come to an abrupt halt. What is this deal all about? Why did this happen? More importantly, what are the consequences of this for India? I shall answer all these questions for you in this video. But before that, I would like to humbly request you to please subscribe to this channel. When you subscribe to this channel, when you like my videos, it really motivates me to keep working harder and make such quality content for you. Now, let's begin. Part 1. What was the Foxconn Vedanta deal all about? You see, semiconductors are an important element for any electronic device in the world. Be it your phones, TVs, computers, radios, video games, medical diagnostic equipments, you simply cannot make this without semiconductors. Just imagine the huge market potential that semiconductors have. According to Fortune Business Insights, the global semiconductor market size is projected to grow from USD 573.44 billion in 2022 to USD 1380.79 billion in 2029 exhibiting a CAGR of 12.2% during the forecast period. That is, from 2022 to 2029, every single year, the semiconductor industry is expected to grow at a rate of 12.2%. Naturally, every major company in the world wants to hold a big chunk of this pie. There is a race going on among USA, China and India to be a world leader in making semiconductors. India in its quest to fulfill this very aspiration of becoming a leading global manufacturer of semiconductors has been heavily pushing for global companies to set up factories in India and make semiconductors within India and export to the world. The Indian government had sought proposals for its $10 billion incentive scheme under the India Semiconductor Mission which gave eligible applicants 50% of the financial support of the project cost. Three proposals were submitted. One from Vedanta Foxconn Joint Venture, another from International Semiconductor Consortium and the third from Singapore's IGSS Ventures. Vedanta Foxconn Joint Venture won the bid. Consequently, in September 2022, Foxconn and Vedanta signed agreements to invest $19.5 billion to set up semiconductor and display production plants in Gujarat. The joint venture had been named as Vedanta Foxconn Semiconductors Limited VFSL, and was led by Vedanta Chairman Anir Agalwal. Vedanta holds a 63% stake whereas Foxconn holds 37% stake in the joint venture. Part 2. Why did the deal fail? Foxconn has not given any official reason for pulling out of this JV. But there seems to be two primary reasons for which the deal failed. Number 1. Neither Vedanta nor Foxconn have the technical expertise to make semiconductor chips. Thus, they needed a to source a tech partner for their proposal. For this, they had got Europe-based company named ST Micro on board for licensing technology. But the Indian government wanted the European company to have more skin in the game, which essentially meant that the government wanted ST Micro to own some stake in the joint venture. But ST Micro was not interested in owning any stake in the joint venture. Hence, its onboarding as a technology partner did not materialize. Vedanta and Foxconn were not successful in onboarding any other technology partner ever since. Number 2. Vedanta is under heavy debt as a company. 
the company has to pay two billion dollars in 2024 two billion dollars in debt which is it has to repay in one year it's a huge number this has put serious concerns over Vedanta's ability to pay for the technology partner in the JV. While this is not an official reason given by Vedanta, the plausibility of it being a trigger for the breaking of this deal cannot be denied. Now let's understand what are the consequences of this for India. Part 3. What are the consequences for India? This is a major setback for India. India's plans to become a global semiconductor maker has certainly been challenged. but all is not lost. The silver lining amidst the setback is that both Vedanta and Foxconn have reiterated their commitments to stay invested in India and contribute to India's semiconductor mission. Vedanta has said that it has other partners lined up. In fact, it has said and I quote, we will continue to grow our semiconductor team. India remains pivotal in repositioning global semiconductor supply chains, unquote. Foxconn has also stated its willingness to stay invested in India and this is what the company said and I quote Foxconn is committed to India and sees the country successfully establishing a robust semiconductor manufacturing ecosystem unquote. I should also remind you that Foxconn has other operations already running in India. Foxconn has factories in Bangalore and Telangana. It is already making Apple iPhones in India and is planning to ramp up its production numbers of iPhones. So in totality, the JV is broken, yes, but both these companies still remain very much invested in India. Does it mean the breaking of the JV will not hurt India? Of course it will. But you have to understand that when we are trying for such huge missions, in this case to be a global semiconductor manufacturing powerhouse, such setbacks will keep on coming along the way. It is important to take the right lessons from this and move forward. The statements from the central government ministers such as Mr. Rajiv Chandrasekhar and Mr. Ashwini Vaishno certainly hint towards that. We are a resilient country. We have fought and emerged victorious against innumerable challenges. I do not think it is going to be any different this time round. We will continue to strive towards becoming a global semiconductor powerhouse by 2030. We are working in mission mode towards that and hopefully we will succeed. Thank you for watching.